Welcome. If you're new here, my name is Aileen and here we like to talk about all things makeup, mostly luxury makeup, skincare, and fashion. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I hope you consider subscribing and joining the family. So today, I just want to dip into a bunch of new makeup, one or two items that you've recommended, and see, are they worth the hype? And we're about to find out. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, like this video, comment as to whether you've tried these products and whether they work for you, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. So just because I have not been on YouTube does not mean I have not been purchasing makeup. I've been seeing what I like and I've been purchasing, but life gets ahead of us and filming becomes difficult sometimes, but I'm trying to do better. So the first is the, for primer, is the Timeless Smoothing Primer from Tarte. I believe Annette, one of my subscribers and a dear friend of mine recommended this for oily skin. So I really just want to give it a try. It does have a slight silicone feel to it, but it does seem to be blurring. So instead of focusing on makeup that gives me a blurring effect and I feel minimizes my pores, I've been focusing on uh, finding a skincare routine that works for me that provides just that shrinkage of the pores and I've really found what works for me significantly so if you're interested in that let me know and I am going to switch up my routine because I really want to try the new Dior the Dior skincare the capture total really want to try that for you guys for 21 plus days and give you my honest opinion prior to starting I did have my skincare and my SPF this does feel nice. It's very smoothing, feels very soft on the skin. I do feel that it helped reduce the appearance of pores, but I'll have to keep you updated on that. Now, this is what I'm really excited about. I have yet to try it. It's the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. I was kind of on the fence for a while because I feel like there's a lot of mixed reviews, but then there's some raving reviews and some with oily skin and some with dry skin. And I'm like, mm, I really want to give this a try. So here we are. Let's see if it's worth the hype. I will say I did go in person to purchase this and finding a shade match was difficult. This is shade 9.5 ambient. It was difficult. It was either way too light and cool or it was way too yellow. So this is the shade I feel worked best for me. And even then, I feel like it's too yellow. But we're going to see. We're going to see what we think and put it to the test. Because I am going out to run some errands and some shopping. So we shall see. I'm going to apply it on this side with the sponge okay once I blend it out I feel like that's not too bad of a shade but I feel it still has a yellow hue to it okay I did adjust the lighting it's a natural finish I wouldn't say it's glowy so on this side with the BK Beauty 101, I really want to try it with a brush and see, let me bring this down on this side. I did apply a tinge more here and I'm going to do that with a brush. I just feel like the, this area on the sides of my nose, I feel like Foundation just really has a hard time sticking there for me. Especially when I have prescription Retin-A in my 
skincare routine and I'm not sure if that makes a difference but I've noticed it does for me. I definitely like the sponge better. The brush side, as you can see here, the pores kind of just fill up with foundation and as soon as I tap that in, it's gone. Yeah, I really do not like this with the brush application. The sponge definitely looks better. So let me blend this out with the sponge and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I definitely did not like the blend with the BK Beauty 101. And this has nothing to do with the brush because I absolutely love this brush. We all know and love this brush and we know it applies foundation flawlessly. This was a product situation. So I definitely like it with the sponge better. It is a lot nicer. It didn't blend down into my neck nicely. Blended well, I think it matches. But the wear test will determine how well this wears on oily skin. As far as coverage, it does look like a medium plus. I did not spot conceal like I usually do. My beauty marks are still peeking through there and there, and I don't have an issue with that. Next is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. I'm excited to try this. I have so many concealers that are new that I really wanna try. I have the new Charlotte Tilbury. I have this one. I believe I have one from EBH that's not new, but it's I hear it could be comparable to this as far as coverage. So I really wanna try them and see what works, what doesn't. Let me know if you wanna see a concealer roundup of concealers that I'm trying. So let's see, this is in the shade Sugar Biscuit 3.5N. So let's just, I am not sure if this is one of those of a little goes a long way. So let's start there and blend that out and just really see how this works for me. The shade looks nice. I feel like it was difficult to find this shade as well. I am going to apply some in my smile lines. I feel like that amount was good. And let me blend. I started to blend with the sponge on this side, but I really want to try a brush as well. So I'm going to try with the Angie Hot and Flashy, the 506. This is a small angled concealer brush. And I love this brush for concealer. Okay, that worked well. I like it with both the brush and the sponge. As anticipated, I have more coverage with the brush than with the sponge. But I'm just going to apply a little more right here and then blend that out with the brush. The concealer does feel hydrating, so that's nice. It's not drying. I feel like you definitely have a little time to play with it, so that's nice. And there it is, foundation and concealer. I feel that concealer really brightened, not too much. Obviously, we got to add some warmth to the skin with some bronzer. But first, let's try a new brow product. This is new to me. It is the Westman Atelier Crayon Diffuser Bone Brow Defining Pencil Crayon Diffuser. I believe the shade is clay. So one side just has like a little spoolie and one side is the brow product. I going to just brush my brows with the spoolie. I have not tried this, but we shall see. It does have the same angle as the Tom Ford Brow Sculptor. And as far as shade, that's the shade. Well, let's see, I usually do my brows off camera 
just because I feel it's something I always take so long to do. But I start at the bottom, just defining the lower part of the brow. And then I start on the top, like not all the way in the corner, right about here. And then I just go around. And if I mess up, I always sculpt my brows with the Boing Concealer from Benefit, the traditional one. That's been my holy grail for spot concealing and sculpting my brows for years. It definitely doesn't tug. It doesn't tug. It fills in easily. And I don't see like any of that waxy buildup, so that's nice. And then right here in the front, I just like to, and I do this high, and then I sculpt. <laughs> I do my brow, my hair like strokes. And then I will, if you can see, that is a hot mess. And then with an angled flat brush, I take my Boing concealer. I love this stuff. Again, it's the traditional. I know it also comes in the standard concealer packaging with a doe foot applicator, but I have not tried that one. This traditional one just really is a go-to for me. I've never had a problem, so I'm like... My mentality is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But there it is. I That worked well. Honestly, it worked better than I anticipated. It's really pretty. And then usually I'll get whatever's left on my brush. And I kind of round this top corner right here. Before and after. So let me do the other brow off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I did finish that off with the Tom Ford Brow Gel. Not new to me, holy grail. This I am excited for. The Christian Louboutin Face Powder. This packaging though is absolutely stunning. It is raised, the threading on this is stunning. I did, it does have a mirror. It is sold separately. So the powder is sold separately from the case. I went ahead and popped it in here. It does have a 24 month shelf life. I purchased this in the shade 35C, which is blushed nude. And I'm excited to give this a try. So with my La Mer powder brush, I'm just going to dab in there and just brush this all over. I don't think I've heard one bad review about this powder. Not one. Thankfully, right? Because for this price, like, jeez. But it's the price we pay for luxury beauty. I am going to pounce that in there and really just set that because like I said, I am going out and about. If you're new here, I'm 38. I have excessively oily skin and I live in humid Central Florida. I am going to use this to set the under eye, but before I do, I just want to blend this and make sure I don't have any creasing. Did get some powder on there. I know it's a face powder, but I want to see how it works on the under eye. And I saw this really cool technique from a makeup artist on TikTok, and I wish I could remember who it was. And if I find it, I will link it down below. But she was saying, if you crease in your smile lines, you do this, and it does not crease, it works. You blow out just so that it's stretched out. And then you set it and it will last all day. It will not break, it will not crease, it will not look all 
funky and settled in there. I love that technique. I've been using it. It works. As far as the powder goes, it is blurring. It is smoothing. It looks good on the under eye as well, which I'm surprised because it's a face powder, but it looks nice. I have no complaints. Now let's move on to bronzer. Now I, I don't know why with my love for bronzer, I had never tried the NARS Laguna bronzers. Like I have the powder in a mini and I have the cream. So this is the Laguna 03 I love this stuff. I absolutely love it. I'm going to use a different, I have been using it and I'm not, I'm going to not going to lie. I love it. It's worth the hype. Look at that. Look at that instant, easily blended bronze and like warmth to the skin. And then I do go around the edges and soften that up a bit. Because you can see already, oh, yes, 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 yes. I love, love, love this. Look at that. And it just like blends so easily. I apply with one side of the sponge. I blend with the other because I don't want to keep tapping in product. I really just genuinely want to blend. I mean, we all know I'm okay with adding more bronzer, but... It just gives a beautiful warmth to the skin. And again, I am medium and this is 03. It did work for me as well when I was deeper um, in the summer months, but oh yeah, I just wouldn't have to blend as much. But even now that I'm lighter, because although I haven't lost my tan on my body, I exfoliate my face so much. <laughs> to prevent clogged pores and all the jazz that I just, my face will never be as tanned as my body. And if you want a nose contour, this is awesome as well. So I use this little edge of the sponge and I just bring it down but I don't blend it with the sponge. And this is the Nikia Joy sponge. I love just the flat, the round, and this angled. I just get a small buffing brush and I blend this out. And it's just natural, snatched. Love it. But because we're oily, we're also going to set it. And to set it, I'm going to go lighter. This is the Laguna 01, I guess. It's just the Laguna. I'm not sure if they have all those different shades in the powder form of the bronzer. But this is a mini. This is a softer shade with the Sigma F40. It is a large angled contour brush. I'm going to dab in here. And I'm gonna see if I like this as a contour. Actually, yes, I like it more as a contour. So I'll apply the majority of the product where I would contour and then brush on the rest on the cheeks. When without additional product, just go everywhere. And it's not that much product. So if I go like this, it's not that much product, but it's that perfect contour shade that when you turn, snatched. I like that. It has a coolness to it that really just gives that shadow effect. And then I'm going to buff that and slightly bring it down the nose without additional product. Yes. Where are we going? We're going shopping. We're going to the outlets. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me there at Amerch Beauty. And I'll try to post little stories if I believe there's a CCO there of what they have. Next, I purchased this because I really want to compare it 
to the Tom Ford Sphinx shade. But this is the Charlotte Tilbury, the Eyes to Mesmerize. And this is the new shade in Sunlit Glow. I love the Tom Ford duos. I think this is a dupe. But the only thing with the dupe is Tom Ford's at the CCO. So, and I love the Tom Ford. They do not budge. They do not go anywhere. So this is the Angie 505. It's a flat shadow brush. I'm going to tap this in here and just put it all over. I'm not trying to do too much of a detailed eye look today. I just want to get out and do what I got to do. I am going to put a little more. I feel like swiping kind of sheared it out, which is anticipated. So I'm going to pat this in. So I can really get that shift. That is pretty. I'm not sure if the camera is picking up the shift. But I like it. I like the color. I still feel it is a lot like the Tom Ford Sphinx. As far as shade, the Tom Ford's dry down. They do not budge. They don't go anywhere. They don't crease. So I really want to test this out and see how that works. So with the Laguna Powder Bronzer, I'm just going to just go right above that just to bring some definition and contour to the eye. I like that. Very simple, very everyday. I like it. Let me do the other eye off camera and we'll come back with a new mascara. Okay, I'm back. So I want to try this because this was so hyped and I do have the Gucci blushes. We'll try those as well. This is the MAC stack. I don't need help with lengthening my lashes. I am blessed in that category, but we have to see what all the hype is about because like really? So we shall see. It definitely looks lengthening not volumizing it's not clumping them it is a hard bristle brush but the bristles are like longer than most hard bristles and pointier so I definitely poked myself down here and we will fix that up it's not clumping them together, so I can appreciate that. We're gonna have to see how this wears. Oily skin. Mm. So there it is, with mascara and without. What do you think? Have you guys tried this? Do you like it? I need to know. This is a sample. I didn't, I haven't been purchasing many full size mascaras just because I feel so bad throwing them out like half full because I try so many. So I've been trying minis, even my favorites that I have backups. I only purchase minis, all except for the Chantecaille Faux Hills and the Chanel Waterproof Le Volume. Those are the only two I keep backup pool sizes of. So we'll have to see, we'll have to see what we think. I think that's when I determine, is it good? Is it full size worthy? Okay, so there we are. What do you think? I think I lengthened them. I don't think it did anything wow to them we will have to see if it flakes and definitely if it transfers and gives raccoon eyes so as far as the blush i picked up 06 warm berry 05 rosy beige and tender apricot i think i'm gonna try the tender apricot just because we have like a peachy pink gold moment going on the eyes let me look at the blush color I know the warm berry is not going to work. That's that deepest shade. 
but this is rosy beige and this is tender apricot. I'm thinking rosy beige. Actually, either would work, but I'm thinking rosy beige. Let's do that. So with a refer 04, it definitely has pigment. Yes. We're gonna have to see the longevity of this. It definitely has pigment. I think this blush has more pigment than I anticipated it to have. Hmm, interesting. Maybe it's the brush. I feel like I've heard mixed reviews on the blush. I'm not big on blush. I, li I like that it's matte. It's not glowy. So if you're looking for a glowy blush or radiant blush, this is not it. I can appreciate that. Ooh. You know what I just did a review on? And I like it but it's classified as a blush and i feel i'm just gonna soften these edges it should have been classified as like a blush topper but it is beautiful if you're lighter than me my skin tone are lighter it's really gonna work this is the lotus blossom radiant blush from the Shantikai holiday collection I'm gonna top this over this just a little bit. Just lightly. Just to give it that soft radiance. Yes, 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 yes. That's a pretty glow. And I feel like the camera is picking up my bronzer a lot darker than it really is. And it looks like it's not blended. It really is. But I can soften this up just a bit. That's really pretty. I wasn't going to wear a highlighter, but then I realized I haven't tried this one. I know I love the formula. This is the Westman Atelier, the Potisante. I know I love the formula. So let's just, and these highlighters are subtle. I feel like they give the perfect natural glow. This is like an everyday highlighter formula for me. You can definitely amp this up by topping it with a powdered highlighter that has the a similar shade and it would look gorgeous. That to me is enough. Between this and my oils, when they see through, we will be good. I always highlight my cupid's bow. Always. I really like the shade. It's pretty. Pretty everyday shade. I don't have anything new for lips. So let me pop something on and I'll come right back and give you my initial impressions of everything we tried out. Okay, I'm back for lips. I did apply the V. Lisa Eldridge in Velvet Blush and I topped it with the Pat McGrath gloss and dare to bear which i love just wanted to amp up the lips a little bit since i kept everything else subtle so let's move on to my initial thoughts the primer is nice it does what it's supposed to do it mattifies but i feel you have to be careful if you don't like that silicone -y feeling you won't like this it's not as bad as let's say the professional but if a little goes a long way if you don't want that silicone feel on the skin, keep it light and you'll be fine. The Hourglass Foundation, which I was really excited for, I still am excited to see how this is gonna wear. It looks really good on the skin. I honestly did not like it applied with the brush, but once I applied it with the sponge, I really like it. I'm 49 minutes in with this foundation on and I think it looks good. It looks really good. The concealer is high coverage. It's not drying under the eye. It's not overly hydrating. So I wouldn't say it's as hydrating as the Dior or Lancome, but it's pretty close. It's not having an increasing. It does have really good coverage. I really like this shade for brightening, but not too, too much. So we'll have to see how this wears. And I'll have 
either in the description box or in a pinned comment just a comment of how everything wore how long i wore it and how it all wore i really like the powder the powder what it does to the skin it just gives like this nice even canvas like i don't film with filters and i feel like it just gave a filtered effect to the skin i really like this so far the blush the blush caught me off guard i wasn't expecting the blush to be this pigmented but it is really really pretty but i'm one that doesn't like a ton of blush I feel like I've seen reviews that if you're like a heavy blush, you may not like these because they're lighter, but I'll keep trying them out. I did purchase three shades, so I'll keep trying them out and I will keep you updated on how I'm enjoying those or not. The NARS bronzer, I have been trying this. I really, really like it. I just love how it blends. The powder was nice too. I feel like Laguna, this is shade one, I had to use that to contour like this would be too cool toned for me to apply on my cheeks but it gave a nice just chiseled contour so i like that i would be interested in seeing which i'm not sure i have to look into it do they make the laguna bronzer powder in multiple shades just like they do in the cream i'm not sure but i'll look into it and if they do i may have to add it to the Sephora VIB sale. The Westman Atelier Highlighter, I really like. I knew I was gonna like the formula. The color is very subtle, perfect for daytime. I can still see the light catching the, the highlight there. I like it. I really like this shade, but I do see it creasing already. The Tom Ford does not crease. So I will try to blend that out and just dry it and see how that works. But this, I love the shade, it's starting to grease. I'm just saying, and you can see that right there. It's not doing it so much on this eye as it is this eye. So I'm not sure if maybe I let this one dry more than this one before I open my eyes, but I will smooth that out and I'll have that pinned down below or in the description box as well. The mascara. The mascara is lengthening. It's not volumizing, but the ultimate wear test will tell us if this is any good. I can't even speak to this. I feel like all mascaras, majority of them, if they say they're lengthening, they're lengthening if they say they're volumizing sometimes they're volumizing but they all look okay presentable to step out the home to step outside at initial application you know what i mean it's the wear are my oils gonna seep through and give me raccoon eyes though like the one that was just awful for me was that chanel allure i it was it flaked so bad so I really want to see if this flakes, if it transfers. And again, all that will be down below. But let me know, have you all tried these products? Do you feel they're holy grails? Do you feel they're worth the hype? Which ones did you like? Like, let's talk about this because I got to keep playing with these. But thank you all so much for coming. Until next time, don't forget, we're all perfectly imperfect. Bye.